Hello everyone. Hope that you all are doing well. So in today's video, we will be discussing about Kafka. That what is Kafka and how you can implement Kafka Hello World example using Kafka and Spring Boot, right? But before jumping into the video context, I would like to request you that it takes a lot of efforts to simplify the topics and present to you. So please like, share and comment on the videos. Also, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon. So let's start with that. What is Kafka, right? Uh, the definition of Kafka is that Apache Kafka is a distributed event store and stream processing platform. It is an open source system developed by Apache Software Foundation written in Java and Scala. The project aims to provide a unified high throughput, low latency platform for handling real time data feeds. Just to sip, this is, this is a, a bookish uh, definition, but just to simplify it, take an example of two microservices, right? One is on a uh, different language, uh, say it uh, Scala and one is on Java, right? And Java is the uh, application which produces data, right? Maybe it takes data from database and then produces the data and that data needs to be processed by the Scala application, right? So how the direct connections would be made? So the direct connections, as I told uh, in the video of microservice architecture, that the direct connection or uh, the the communication between the two services could be done by using template, right? REST template, or it could be done by Kafka, right? Kafka provides a sort of a store, right? Where there are multiple topics, right? And topics are also divided into multiple partitions, right? And you can push data on the Kafka topic and the other application that is in Scala that can read that topic and take that data and process whatever it uh, the application wants to do with that data, right? So you can understand uh, in that way that Kafka is like a store which takes our data and keeps it in the partitions, the topic partitions and the other application could read it from there. So now how Kafka works, let me take you to the uh, flow graph of uh, Kafka. So this is how uh, the Kafka uh, uh, flow graph looks like, right? Uh, so there is there are some producers and there are some consumers and in between there is a Kafka cluster. So Kafka cluster will have many topics. Right now I have made a single topic, but yes, the Kafka cluster might have many topics and that topic would be divided into multiple partitions, right? And those partitions would be actually, you can say that a particular storage is being provided and in that storage also, that storage is also divided into right, uh, multiple containers. So what uh, these partitions will help the consumer, right? How the it will help the consumer, like uh, the producer is producing the data on the Kafka topic, right? And the consumers are consuming. So if there are multiple producers and they are producing the data on the Kafka topic continuously, so the data could be distributed into different partitions so that only a single partition could not be flooded with all the requests, right? And the uh, managing of the data could also be easy while uh, uh, making the topic divided into different partitions. And the consumer can read data from different different partitions also Kafka uh, Zookeeper actually now uh, what all these things are being managed by Zookeeper that okay the consumer call is coming and from where the data would be read. So all these things are being managed by Zookeeper same is that a producer is producing the data where it should write on which partition it should write. So Zookeeper manages that. Now there is another concept in between that is called as grouping right. So so now you can understand that uh, the Kafka cluster is like a storage where producers are producing the data and consumers are consuming the data, right? Same way uh, what we were doing uh, while we were uh, de designing the microservice architecture where I said that, okay, we'll be using REST template. So at that moment, uh, we, are, we were using REST template to push our data to and my uh, consumer application that is my another microservice was reading from that REST template. So now it's uh, the topic 
the name of the topic and the group ID should be provided by the consumer to read that to read that data that has been produced by some producer. So this is how uh, Kafka works. Now, as I have explained that how Kafka works and what is the definition of Kafka. So now let's start with uh, that how we'll be start working on Kafka and what are the basics, what are the prerequisites that we require. So first of all, let's go on our browser and let's let us search Kafka, Kafka download. So we'll search Kafka download and go on the first link. So now you can download any of the versions, right? Uh, so you will download it and you will you will have to unzip it. I have already downloaded it, so I'll not uh, download again. So let me take you to the folder of Kafka. So I have downloaded into my downloads and this is my Kafka folder, right? You would be looking at like why uh, the uh, Kafka folder name is Kafka AS. So there uh, I'll come to that point also that uh, many times this uh, issue comes while we are working on Kafka. So that's why I have renamed the folder name. So this is the Kafka directory, right? There is a bin folder, right? And there we have all our uh, uh, bat files and start uh, uh, shell files. So we have zookeeper uh, start file and we have Kafka start file as well, right? Kafka server start file and zookeeper start server start file. So the prerequisite is that we need to download the Kafka first. And when we are trying to run our server, we need to run the zookeeper and Kafka simultaneously, right? If we are not running zookeeper and Kafka simultaneously, then we will uh, see a exception while running our application that says that the broker is not connected, right? So for that, first of all, you need to run the zookeeper and Kafka, right? So this is the prerequisite that we need, you need the Kafka and before running the application, you need to start the zookeeper server and Kafka server. Right, I'll tell you that how we'll do that. So now as you have downloaded the Kafka and you have seen that how the directory of Kafka looks like. So this is the project directory. It looks like this. So uh, this is a hello world example. So I won't be uh, making it a too complicated example. But yes, just to tell you that we will not be pushing a simple string message on Kafka, right? That's not practical. When we work in our organizations also and when we work on uh, live projects as well, we need to push some data, right? Data means that there is some kind of an object that needs to be pushed on Kafka, right? And uh, there is some consumer application consuming that data. So we'll be pushing an object here, right? So I have, that's why I've made a model uh, package wherein I have a user class, right? So this is my uh, user model class where I have kept the name and age. Age I have taken string. You can take it any in uh, way. You can take it as int. I should correct it as int only. I should correct it as int, right? Yes. So I need this. So we have name and age in our user class. So let, now let me take you to the, uh, first of all, the main class. So the main class looks like uh, this. It's a simple class. It has been annotated with Spring Boot application, right? Now the main logic lies into this uh, service class, right? So we have made two service classes here. One is our producer. One is our consumer, right? So producer and consumer, as I told in the architecture as well. So producers are producing the data on the Kafka topic and consumers are consuming the data from that Kafka topic. Right, so let us just jump to the producer. So this is my uh, calf, uh, Maven dependency. This is my Maven dependency that is uh, used because of which we are using the Kafka here, right? So this is my Maven dependency into my pom.xml. So now let's go on the producer class. So here you can see that uh, I have used Kafka template and I've defined in Kafka template with uh, accepting string values, right? The key is also string and value is also string. You can act, uh, this could act as a map, right? So why I have taken the uh, string, uh, both uh, the key and values are string. So first, the first string, that is the key. The key tells us that, okay, uh, so now you can see that uh, we have just made a method to send a message on the topic. And we are returning using the Kafka template. We are sending, we are using the send method, right? And send method takes two values, right? First is the topic value. And the second one is the data, right? 
so you need to mention that which topic you are pushing the data and you second one is the data right you can have the string data uh, json to json right right now uh, as i said that i am using an object to push on the kafka topic that's why i am using json right so that to convert into the json data right so this data would be coming as an object a user object and that, that would be converted into json and then would be pushed to the topic so our topic name is test topic simply i am using kafka template dot send and i am uh, mentioning my topic name and then i am sending the data to it so this was uh, the uh, procedure of sending data on our topic right now there would be uh, some consumer who would be consuming the data and just to clarify on that this is a very basic example wherein your producer is also active your consumer is also active everything is active when you push the data on the uh, topic at that same moment only the consumer is consuming the data from the topic so we'll cover uh, another example in some other video where we'll be pr uh, producer would be producing the data on the kafka uh, kafka topic and the consumer application would be down at that moment and consumer application when it comes up and hits the request to read the data then all the data that has been produ produced by the producer on that kafka topic will be read by the consumer we'll cover this topic in some other video right now it's a basic that how we can make a basic hello world example with kafka so right now our producer is also active and consumer is also active right so now let's go on the consumer uh, class so here you can see it's a simple consumer class we have annotated with at the rate service so uh, the producer is also at the rate service and consumer is also at the rate service so we are uh, simply using a annotation that is kafka listener right this annotation tells our application that there is a active consumer which is listening to this particular topic and any data would be pushed on that topic would be listened by this listener right so this is our consumer so consumer uh, when we are uh, giving the ad annotation of kafka listener we need to pass topic and group id so topics passed here is an array right it's a string array so you can there could be uh, a consumer could be like it uh, the consumer is reading data from many topics right so you can give those many topics as well uh, using comma so that that's why the topic is an array and group id is a console is printing our group id as well so so here we have made a method to listen uh, from that particular topic any message coming to that particular topic would be printed with hi i am a consumer and i have read this message and the message would be displayed here so this is uh, the producer uh, this is a consumer uh, service and we have already discussed the producer service so now let me take you to the first of all let me take you to the controllers okay just before controllers let me take you to the configuration so before before uh, running the application we need to define few basic configurations to run the application and few basic configurations you can define in your yaml file or you can define in your dot properties files or even you can define in your java files as well so there uh, in the application dot properties i have defined a bootstrap server for producer and the localhost 9092 is the port right so the default port to the producer service has been provided and it starts at 9092 only right and then we have the key serializer and value serializer right so what is the need of these so key serializer and value serializer are being used because whenever the data is being produced by the producer and needs to push on the kafka topic then only serialized data would be pushed on the kafka topic so that's why we are telling that okay our key and value serializers are string serializer and push it on the kafka topic so we have defined that okay our key and value serializer are string serializers so these are the basic uh, properties that are being required to run our application right so our configuration part is done producer part is done consumer part is done let's uh, go on the controller part right let me take you to the kafka controller and here what we are doing is we have uh, defined our controller with at the rate rest controller and we have given some home mapping to it that is slash kafka and then we have given our endpoint mapping that is publish 
so that slash publish would be used used to publish the data on the Kafka topic. So uh, you can see that uh, we are returning the response entity as the output now. And what we are doing is we are simply sending it to the pro, uh, procedure service and we are calling the send message to the topic and we are passing the message and the message would be written on this particular topic that is test topic. So our controller is simply uh, the result would be returned to it and the result would be published on the uh, postman output with the status as OK and the result would be uh, the data that we have posted, right? So let's uh, now the discussion of the code has been done. Let's run the application. Okay, you can see that this exception is coming. Broker may not be available. So this exception is coming because we haven't started our Zookeeper server and Kafka server. So first of all, we need to start our Zookeeper server and Kafka server. So when you are uh, in the bin directory, you have to go in Windows right and now you have to put that command so the zookeeper server will start now right we have put that command in so we are starting the zookeeper server by using zookeeper server start dot bat and the configuration of that zookeeper would be picked up from zookeeper dot properties so now uh, let's again go in bin folder and let's type in cmd and let's uh, again go in cd windows right and now we have to put in this command kafka server would uh, be getting started right we have already uh, started the zookeeper server here right next right and now let's go on our id and let's stop the server again and let's start the server again right so let me go and start the server again so you can see that it, the group id is being assigned and the partition the test topic partition is being done right by our application right it is test topic zero right the offset has been assigned so test topic zero and group id is being given to us so group id is the unique id that we have provided and the partition assigned it test topic zero so the data that will be pushed from the procedure would be pushed on test topic zero and consumer would be reading it from test topic zero so let's go on the postman and this is my call 8080 kafka publish and if I click on send, the request is getting sent. See that our output to our postman is name Raman and age 24, right? And when we go on our console, we see that our consumer has read the value and it says I am a consumer and I have read this value name as Raman and age is 24. So let me now change some data, right? Let me uh, change the name to right, Deepak, right? And let me send it again. So when I send uh, the request, so it says Deepak and age is 24 and let's go on the console. Yes, our consumer has read the value Deepak and age 24. So this was it from the video, right? Uh, it was a very basic video wherein you have learned that how a hello world example could be run using Kafka. So uh, this was just a hello world example to Kafka wherein a consumer is also active and producer is also active. Producer is pushing the data and consumer is reading that data on the same time. So uh, this was it from the video. Hope that you people like, share and comment on the video. And if you are new, new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.